So we're bearing Romantic Relevance. I'm Diego, and with me I've got Zach, Ethan, and Tom. So fast, all the things we need in the past. And I think it's safe to call it a beautiful thing. And I think it's safe to say this is just part of it. While time flies by There's moments in the wind Maybe this is just part of it And time tends to Settled affections The more I grow first uh, performance. Oh Have God, was it around? that bad? <laughs> what? No, no, no. I was just wondering. I was just because because most of the time people have like fairly long sets, but this one was a little bit uh, shorter. Which nothing wrong with that because then you know leaves people uh, oh, with something more. to want. Yeah, well, I I mean people don't listen to music for very long <laughs> these days. I have the attention span of of a squirrel, so. I guess we were pandering to that. We just, I, don't know. I think people care probably more about our personalities than our music. <laughs> so <it's, laughs> if we're being dead honest. Yeah, I got like a minute into a song and then like I, you know, go to the next song. You feel me? Yeah. <laughs> you <know? laughs> so, so exactly. So we were like, let's give what the audience wants. Give them three songs. Hardly. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so if you've just tuned in, this has been Romantic Relevance. Hey guys. Yeah, we have. I'm Diego. Um, yeah, thank you. Introduce yourselves. I'm Tom. I'm Zach. I'm Ethan. <laughs> uh, and um, where are you guys from? Well, I'm an Aquarius. <laughs> I'm a Cancer. I'm a Leo. Sagittarius. That's where we're um, from. Yeah, so to say thank you guys, but I ask you where you're from. <laughs> <laughs> Lexington. <laughs> I'm talking about galaxy-wise. Lexington. Yeah. Lexington. 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 Right around here. Yeah. Four of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. 
Hey, so all of you guys were grew up here in Lexington. Yeah. Well, we all yeah. went to the same church, and then we all didn't want to go to that church anymore. <laughs> so we started a band. <laughs> <laughs> I actually kicked it in Louisville until I came to college in this area, but now I'm here, oh, so yeah. that's all right. Yeah. That's Tom, Zach, and I met. Believe it or I mean, not. Me and Tom. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Ethan and I played in bands together when we were in like middle school and high school, and so a lot of like really bad garage rock that Ethan and I just sweat out in our garages from ages like twelve to sixteen. Any listeners know about On the Watch Front? Oh God, please don't. Say OTW, that. Don't. y'all, come on, look it up. It's all over Bandcamp. Still on Instagram, actually. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Yeah, was we right. we recommend not listening to them. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as a Lexington native myself, I'm going to ask the native Lexingtonian question, where you guys go to high school? Lafayette. Ooh. Lafayette. Tate's Creek. Tate's Creek. So I'm a fake Lexingtonian. I grew up right on the edge of Fayette and Jessamine County, so I went to West Jessamine High School. Ah, uh, okay. So where'd you go? I went to Henry Clay. Uh, my Ooh, brother went there for a little bit. Oh, fun. Yeah, fun? What year did you graduate? Uh, 2016. Did you know Gabriel, by any chance? Okay, what last name? Molina. It's a familiar name. Oh. I don't think I know him. Though. What about Scout Anders? No. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, well, yeah. So it was a big high school, yeah, yeah. Was, as yeah. most high schools are here in Lexington. Yeah. Um, so let's get back to the music because I know that's what people are let's really talk here for. Yeah. Um, so romantic relevance. Where can people find you? We're on Spotify, and Apple Music, all that. Instagram. You can probably find us through the We Channel. <laughs> if, if you. <laughs> <laughs> There's a hack on um on the on all We Fit programs where <laughs> if you do sun salutation just right enough Sunshine it will just link in pink. you it will link you to uh, all of our songs. Yeah. On Spotify. Salute the sun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, do you play Smash Bros? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's your main? Um, Isabel. Oh Ooh. what? Yeah. Dog main. Main. Dog main. Dog main. Cause yeah. I would say We Fit is one of my mains. Yeah, well, she's good. Let's let she's talk good. about her mains. Tom, you go. <laughs> I, I'm a big Maybe. Yosh guy, but I've been playing with some Roy, like Roy recently. <laughs> you know? y'all like Roy? Roy is. Mm. Roy. But Joker, Joker's changed the game, low key. What's Joker? Dude, you don't even know. It's a walking Phoenix. No. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, who's your main? I stopped paying attention. What? <laughs> jo- Joker's Zach. from I think from Fire Emblem, isn't he? The, the Persona, dude. Persona Pers- Five. Oh my Persona. god. Persona. I'm so glad Whoa. none of my none of my friends are listening because I have one friend that would oh. probably come in and uh, sla- smack me around for I, not knowing that. Wow. What you mean? I just didn't know that. <laughs> Any of that information. I mean, is Lil Mac most of the time. But I'm trying to transition over to Mewtwo. I'm not gonna lie. Mm-hmm. I feel like Mewtwo's got a piece of my heart. The future, you know. I'm ready to get the rest of. Yeah. Link. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that that makes sense. Yeah, every Reese, time. What's your main? Snake. Ooh, you snake. actually Ooh. play a snake. He's a box man. I'd be scared to play him. I, yeah, <laughs> there are those mains. There are those those people who main a certain characters, and immediately you're like, oh, I'm oh, screwed. Yep. yep. Like, I'm Isabel. <laughs> Isabel. It's my snake. my boyfriend is my boyfriend also mains Isabel. Um, oh, man. and he's a much better. So it's just psychotic. a firestorm. Yeah, yeah. Wow. We we go hard. Um. <laughs> wow, Siri, that got so off topic. <laughs> what are you talking I love about? It. This is the topic. Right? So we're not right. we're not going to talk about your guys's music. We can talk about it. <laughs> we, 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 this we really is, can. You you have forty more minutes that you can play with however you want. So Fantastic. um, if you want, guys, want to. So get I'm not going to lie to you. We were under the impression that we were would only play about three songs. Yeah. I, I so, said. 35 to 40 minutes. I don't think you had a time limit in the email. Diego. 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 (laughs) We went to a school where the food was terrible. Anna, you do not understand. (laughs) Miserable. We got baggage we can talk about all night if you want to. Wait, what school? What school? You guys ready? Three, two, one. Asbury. Asbury. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. All right. So next topic, our music. Talk yeah. to us. Talk to us. <laughs> Talk to us about our music. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think what the listeners really want to yeah. hear is what you guys have for them. So, okay. uh, what are your some of your influences? LMFAO is a big one. <laughs> <laughs> 
years. <laughs> Y'all remember Blood on the Dance Floor? Some of that, oh you know? My God. Some uh, insane clown posse. You know, all that stuff. <laughs> all that really important to us. There's this, indie, there's, there's this indie band called Lincoln Park that I listened to for a while. <laughs> Wait, on another topic, I met another person who still in 2020 thinks that Arctic Monkeys is an indie band. Jeez. That made me... No! That is... I, I wanted to break my bones when I heard that. Or how about I move? Um, on, okay. So I grew up, my dad is a fine artist, a painter. You So like he did album artwork for Counting Crows. So he, okay. So I grew up in like a studio where he was constantly blasting music and it was... Pearl Jam and like early Coldplay, like the Parachutes album, X and yeah. Y, and then mm. U2, and then like DC Talk. And then, or like, <laughs> it was just, it was such an eclectic, like a Victor Wooten, big bass guy of just like, I had a kind of very pop rock kind of grow up. Yeah. What about you, Tom? What about you, Tom? Man, well, that's such a question. I mean, yeah, def <laughs> definitely grew up in that uh, similar, in, in I mean, a lot of Pearl Jam in my house. Really? Oh, you yeah, a ton of Pearl I Jam. I didn't know this. Yeah, I had this, some feedback back here, um, but I don't know. I got like deep into the into the like electronic world. Yeah. When I was like in high school, and then after that, just kind of like explored a lot of music. But I think Viva La Vida or Death and All His Friends. I mean, that's like that was the album that made me realize, do yeah, you, I like music. I should probably do more of it. Do you like Coldplay? And here we are now. It, yeah, I mean, it. There are, I don't think there are many people that hate Coldplay. That's yes. true. They're not um, a hateable personality, <laughs> except for our drummer. Ethan, he hates them. He can't stand them, which is so funny. <laughs> so if anyone wants to beat him up, this is his address. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for me, we all grew up in the same sort of like uh, 90s CCM, Christian contemporary music world. And uh -huh. so all of us, I think, except for... All of us at different times sort of discovered music that made us like just the world exploded and we had this like revelation and for me it was when it was I heard more than like that subset. Yeah, it was yeah. it was more it's than just the deal. background. Yeah. And for me when I heard Springsteen for the first time when I heard Bruce Springsteen for the first time, that's when I like lost my mind and I just yeah. Sorry, I gestured um at you because you're wearing a very Springsteen I know. Outfit, I try to know, subtly the, send like, <laughs> spring like scene vibes. yeah, just sort of like I mean, secret messages. Blue jeans, white blue tea, jeans, white tea, <laughs> red plaid. <laughs> yeah, songs about the Vietnam War. And <laughs> but then for me recently, it's been a lot of. Or in the last like two years, I've had sort of like a '90s neo soul revolution. So like yeah. Erykah Badu and D'Angelo oh, and yeah. Bilal and that sort of like when the Roots produced every single R&B soul artist in the late '90s mm -hmm. and early 2000s. That's my stuff. Yeah. Ethan, what about Ethan. you? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the, you, you don't, you <laughs> uh, I don't really listen to any music, so like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I listen to like 1975 and Manchester Orchestra. Yeah. And, Ooh, great, great. Um, we like them. I learned drums from Travis Barker yeah. of Blink-182. Okay, yeah. That's where I, that's, I just started listening to that and playing along, and that's how I learned. That's one of that's the, my, like... That's my number one. The, like, cruxes that brings our band together is this, is, like, Blink-182 and Tom DeLonge. Mm. And that whole, that whole band chemistry is just kind of, like, that was everything. Yeah. I also want to talk about the name Romantic Relevance. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about that, how that came into being? I, because the whole project kind of started with me and Tom. Is Tom had heard that yeah. I was making some music and wanted to produce it, and but I didn't want to release it under Diego Molina because I didn't want to be Enrique Iglesias. So I was like, <laughs> I gotta I just come up with something like cool. I had a song, so the song I played part of it. Originally, it had this verse where it was like, um, like a lyric it was like, "This is romantic synthesis that's starting to end." And I was looking, trying to find names, and I was looking through my lyrics. And I saw Romantic Synthesis, and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And the alliteration just came out, and I was like, oh, that just feels right. And yeah. so, yeah, we, we like went through like a love-hate of the name for a while, and but yeah. we, we like abbreviated it to Romrel, R-O-M-R-E-L. Romrel. Yeah, so if you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we, there, was a, there was about a solid year where we were trying to figure out if it was the stupidest band name we'd ever heard in our lives or not. <laughs> um, and then we just sort of grew to love it. That's all. 
Yeah. I'm still kind of so so on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, what, like year and a half? We're waiting. <laughs> we're waiting until people start shouting romantic relevance. We want romantic relevance. We want that, that Mad Mushroom <laughs> band. Look, it's that Mad Mushroom band, romantic relevance. That's all we want. When we that want happens, the name is sticking. The so, official sure. band of Mad Mushroom Pizza. Yeah. I was about to ask because one of the song uh, tracks is named Mad Mush. Mm-hmm. Mad Mushroom. Yeah. And I was going to ask. Mm-hmm. Sorry, it's automatic. <laughs> um, uh, and I was going to ask. Um, if you guys were familiar with so the pizzeria Mad my, Mushroom. My friend group is obsessed with it. We're all like, yeah. it's just our absolute favorite pizza. We eat it all the time. And my friend Scout was over and we were obviously smashing it. And then the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> we were eating keep on going. Just keep going. Just keep, keep going. going. And, Didn't happen. And we wrote the song literally very shortly, this Mad Mushroom song. And when I brought it to the band, I tweeted at them. Here's what happens. I tweeted them. And I was like, hey, we wrote a song about you guys. And they responded. We're like, can't wait to hear it. And I think the scout was like, Mad Mushroom wants to hear a song. <laughs> and then last week, they had a Twitter Tuesday where they had a giveaway. And if you retweeted it and liked it, you would get a free hat. And they gave me a free pizza per month. So I was like, guys, we have to do this. And so we rehearsed it last weekend and figured it all out. Yeah. It's our song dedicated to our, to, to our dad, to Mad the, Mushroom. Th- to the thing that keeps us actually alive. <laughs> the thing that keeps us together as a band. But then also that time we were at that show and you just kind of whipped that song out and didn't tell any of us. Literally, <laughs> oh, none of yeah. us heard the song. We didn't know the song existed. He, just, he was just like, hey, I'm going to play a song. And then he's like, no, I'm just going to play a song. And he gets up with the acoustic and just plays the Mad Mushroom song. None of us had heard of the song. He just plays it for the audience who were just kind of like, it's pretty good. They got into it. And we're like, all right, cool. And this is, this, so this is the first time we played it as like a band a in a show. Yeah. Yeah. What I like about that song too is that sort of the first verse makes you like, it seems like a real song. <laughs> <laughs> like the first verse is like, is like, I never lied about loving you. Like that's a really, that's a good line. People have probably said that to each yeah, other, whatever. That, we get wow. to the second verse where like a dude crawls out of a sewer <laughs> and steals pepperoni pizza. Yeah. And I think I had like vaguely heard it once. Like maybe I heard it in like a dream state or something. <laughs> <laughs> while we were playing it at the show and it was at cosmic charlie's the one off of um oh yeah great venue yeah the the one of the newest locations cool, cool and so it's this like super long concrete hallway and diego with an acoustic guitar going <laughs> <laughs> the rest of us just looking around at each other like i don't just know what's going like, on to you do you, you, know? <laughs> do you like this song do you i think i like this song That's what's going on one. yeah it's all right oh uh, yeah yeah one of uh, the line that stuck out for me was something about mushrooms inside of you yeah, yeah. mushrooms it's, growing it's inside outro. of you it's mad mushroom you mean so much to me mad mushroom i want you inside of me yeah mad mushroom it speaks for itself yeah, it's, like it what is. else do we have to say right now i'm not trying to be poetic in my writing i'm just trying to be tr- tr- true to my experience <laughs> this is <laughs> you're trying to be direct up front the, the truest pe- version of your yourself face. you can be poetry is dead we're, we're just being real right now you know <laughs> honesty with <laughs> <laughs> this is uh this is what people one of my favorite <laughs> other big influences is a band called laney um i don't know if you, have you heard of them i'm not familiar okay so they're 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 like definitely on the rise getting like a bigger band they have like a very kind of like a cult following right now but the writer just has the most almost like dear diary lyrics so at first you're just like why is he this is so personal and just like kind of annoying yeah but then you realize that he's just being so honest and you, it's become so endearing and you love it. He's one of my favorite, favorite writers. He was, he was somebody who, Paul Klein, right? Yeah. He was somebody that Diego got me hip to and it's funny because Diego and I both write songs. Actually, all of us. We all write songs. Um, well, I don't know about Ethan. No, Ethan with Fed Up. Oh, right. Ethan yeah. Songs. So yeah. we've all written songs before so we all sort of have different sort of stylistic choices and Diego comes to me with this album. I think they're like first album or something like that. And you like, you turn on the first track and it's called like Dumb Stuff or something like that. It's like, oh my God, I think I'm in love. The way we stay up late and talking about dumb stuff. And I was it's just profound, like, this is the man. dumbest Come on. thing i ever heard it is in my life. That yeah. song hurt when I first heard it. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> but now I'm in this place where I'm like, oh my <laughs> God. I think. And I just jam to yeah, it, bro. Yeah, check out Dumb Stuff Good. by Laney. L-A-N-Y. Dumb Stuff. <laughs> kind of all come together just going like, let's just do this together. We all really just want to get financially stable enough as a band so that Ethan can quit Starbucks. Yeah, that's and, facts. And the real thing is just that like whichever project takes off first, 
we're kind of all just gonna go on. Like, yeah. Like if Zach's career takes off first, then I'll just be his guitar tech. Like I'm just gonna go. I'm forget my relevance. I'm going with him. And if Tom just like gets huge on Tumblr. Like, <laughs> <laughs> then that's great for him. I don't know if it'll do anything, but I want to talk about my feelings. <laughs> Thank you. That's the that's the general consensus is the in the band is that we just need to make enough money so that Ethan can justifiably quit Starbucks and buy new symbols. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing a, a high tom. Do you know? On, mm. So, like, how many bands you think are coming out of UK right now? <sighs> like, do you know of many or? <laughs> yeah. Right now, the only people I know who are attending UK and are also in a local band, um, Johnny Conqueroo. Oh, oh my gosh. I love those guys. I've been wanting to do a show with them for so long. Yeah. They're the real deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah they are. Absolutely. Um, and I believe Sour Cream has finally graduated okay, high I've school. Heard, I've seen maybe their Instagram handle. I, yeah. I just heard their new single. Yeah, it hey is Harley. absolutely wild. Yeah. So wait, so they just graduated high school? Yeah, I believe they what? just I believe they, they've started college now. Man. I thought I they were like can. what? Okay. Mm-hmm. I, my mind just got blown mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Well, Conqueror I just, was kind of the same way. Yeah. yeah. Like they I yeah, mean, they just started in when college Ethan too. when Ethan and I were playing in bands together, like Conqueroo was like, there was buzz about Conqueroo even then, and that was like yeah. 2015, 2016. And I, I think, Diego, were you, you at that Fort show? Castle. Yeah. Congrats. yeah. Are you serious? Congrats to them. Yeah. Congrats yeah. to them, yeah. I think I've met them once, and their drummer, his name escapes me right now, but I just, I love those guys to oh. death. They're so fun. Yeah. But um, there's been buzz about Conqueroo for so long, at least in the Lexington scene, to the point where like I saw them at... The Burl with I can't remember who else played with him, but I think Diego, were you at that show? I don't too? know. I don't think so. Then they had this like sort of projector thing that was going on in the back, and they were like just doing these crazy, insane visuals, and it was the coolest show I think I'd seen in Lexington in a really, really long time. And they worked with a producer that um, I, I know like semi well, and I've gotten the honor to work with a guy named Dwayne Lundy, and so that's been a lot of fun to have that connection and. Yeah. Lexington just sort of all slowly kind of coming up and growing and it's yeah. quite a fun thing. Yeah, that's what I've heard from um, a lot of bands since I started doing the show is that um, there's a general feeling that the Lexington music community is really coming up. Yeah. Um, a, oh, yeah. a lot of good bands are, have either finally getting some some of their feet on the ground mm-hmm. and um, new bands starting and... Um, one thing I've heard is that there's a lot of closeness. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. A lot of it, there, it's not too uh, clicky. Uh, yeah. The Lexington music. Scene. Well, that's the cool thing is that there's like there's this general. I play with like a couple of a couple of bands throughout Lexington, and um, I've gotten lucky enough to see sort of a few different sides of the scene. And the general consensus is that like something's in the water here. Like nobody can really point yeah. exactly what it is, but but there's a general air of of a really great following of people who just come out to shows. Yeah. Um, and it's really exciting. Like I just played um, with Buck the Taxidermist. Yeah. Um, and we just opened for Bendigo Fletcher at the Borough like sure. a couple of weeks ago. And Bendigo's it's a Louisville fantastic. band, but they're like, they come into Lexington all the time. And mm-hmm. Ryan, their front man, um, is sort of connected with my sister who also plays music. And so it's all just sort of interweaving together so that, Maybe everybody in Lexington will just hop on one person's career. <laughs> yeah, right. Like Bendigo will explode and then they'll just have like a 400 person touring crew. <laughs> yeah. that, that's kind of how it's always been. Like I've, I started songwriting with, with Zach Hamilton and Abby, his sister, years ago. And it was just Abby Hamilton, all, check yeah, her out. Abby Hamilton, yeah. yes. fantastic, well, fantastic artist. And she's got an EP or singles coming out this year. Um, we're working on our EP, our second EP. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It'll be out in the next month or so. Woo, oh, called cool. What These Years Felt Like Part 2. Part 2. Um, uh, that's a fun thing to talk about, too, is that we did that. Basically, we've done the EP that we have on Spotify right now pretty much by ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, all the recording work and editing work. Editing work was completely done by Tom. Yeah. What's up, y'all? My apartment was a fun place to work on a lot of <laughs> yeah. things. Yeah. <laughs> and then we did this, this EP we did um, in the sunroom of my parents' house. And it's really exciting when you when you get to do that stuff yourself. It's really fun because there's just you can create a really safe atmosphere where everybody's allowed to be creative. Yeah. But my favorite thing was like Ethan, like we were talking about doing drums. We set up drums and Ethan was like, I'm gonna do this 
I'm going to do every song in a day, like put my money on it. And then he did. Yeah. And <laughs> got it. Yeah, yeah. And that's the fun thing is that then we can just sort of like Tom can be tracking keys parts while the rest of us are sitting on on the couch in the playing same Clash sunroom playing Clash of Clans and <laughs> League of Legends and <laughs> being nerds. <laughs> yeah. It's it's <coughs> and that's what I kind of what's so special about this Lexington music scene is that it's yes, it's about the music, but the community is what's so much more actually interesting. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's that uh, we all want to make it in a sense, but we're all really like we've gotten used to the fact that like, no, we're going to do this because we love it because we we just love what we do. And that comes out in your shows. It comes out in your writing. Yeah. It comes out when you talk to people. And so we all sort of found each other and we go like, these are our people. You mm-hmm. know, that's why mm-hmm. like we're such good friends with Buck and Lilac is another fantastic mm-hmm. band. Great band. So, you know, Every, everyone likes Lilac. Yes. They're not they're like the, they're like the does play. Like you with cannot a man not like not Gideon like as your front yeah. man. Who can't love Lilac? I know. It's He's so handsome. And band. Elizabeth. They're handsome all like, and, and Paul. Paul. <laughs> and Zach Martin. Zorton. Oh yeah, I was delivering gosh. Panera the other day, because that's what I do. Wait, wait, hold on. Where do you work at Panera? Which Panera? The downtown one. Do you? Okay. Wait. Um, <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Do you know a Grant Musser? Yes, I know Grant. He's my uncle. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Uncle Connect. Do you know dude? that Grant was my trainer? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh <laughs> wow. That's beautiful. <laughs> just like, have a moment of silence. Five people live in this town, <laughs> <laughs> and they're all in this room. But um, sorry. I no, had, I, d- I, I delivered know. Panera to somebody the other day, and Zach Martin was f- like coming out, and he was like, "I'm fixing a bathtub, and then I'm playing here later today." <laughs> <laughs> and that's who he is, man. He'd be like, "Yeah, I'm gonna do like four days with laid back, and then I'm gonna go fix somebody's toilet." Exactly. And, and but if you the follow the, the stories of bands that make it, that like find success, that's how it really is. Like, yeah, yeah. there was I think the guitar plays for the. Foo Fighter or somebody there's a documentary where Chris he's Shifflet? like maybe he was just like I was painting houses for years mm-hmm. and then yeah. all of a sudden the next day I was on tour playing arenas yeah and that's kind mm-hmm. of like we all are aware of that reality so we don't take the music career part too seriously because we're just like most of this is about algorithms and accidents yeah let's just focus on making stuff that we like algorithms and accidents <laughs> man New well, and it's name? about it's yeah. about grind. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like, like not really going, giving up. Keep going, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you just make stuff that you believe in and love, and then you try and like have fun and get drunk, and then you like play video <laughs> games and like you enjoy like life. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of why I think we're all like a, why we work so well together is because you know we really care about enjoying life is the most thing. We also mm. don't reasons to live. Yeah. Video yeah. game music. Alcohol. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I think that resonates with every single person that could be listening to this. <laughs> That's probably we just got like forty new Spotify follows. <laughs> I like oh, that. Oh, these dudes play Smash Bros <laughs> and drink. Yeah, I bro. like, I like that alcohol. Relatable. They dude. got that song about pizza. <laughs> bro, Romantic Relevance is the most relatable band in Lexington. They sing about pizza, <laughs> Smash Bros, <laughs> tattoos, <laughs> <and> pizza, <laughs> and girls. <laughs> Smash Bros. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're kind of talking about the license.